four-legged creatures known as dire wolves, once the stuff of fantasy and brought to life in HBO's Game of Thrones, no longer belong solely to that realm. For over 10,000 years, they ruled North America. Massive jaws, bone-crushing teeth, pack hunters larger than any wolf alive today. They were the dire wolves, and they vanished at the end of the last ice age. But now, thanks to breakthroughs in science, they might be making a comeback. This isn't science fiction. This is happening right now. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. Dire wolves, Canis dearest, were not your average wolves. They were heavier, more muscular, and had a bite force strong enough to crush bone. Unlike modern gray wolves, which evolved in Eurasia, dire wolves were native to the Americas. They roamed from Canada to Bolivia, hunting large prey like horses, camels, and even bison. They were apex predators until about 10,000 years ago, when changing climates and dwindling prey wiped them out. For decades, scientists believed they were just a larger cousin of the gray wolf. But recent DNA research revealed something surprising. Dire wolves weren't even closely related to modern wolves at all. They were an entirely separate branch of the canine family, a dead-end species. Until now. Enter Colossal Biosciences, a Texas-based biotech company that's made headlines for its bold mission. De-extinction. Yes, they're also working on bringing back the woolly mammoth, but in early 2025, they announced something just as wild. They had successfully bred three genetically engineered wolves that share key traits with dire wolves. They named them Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi. These aren't true dire wolves because we don't have enough intact DNA to clone one outright. Instead, Colossal used gene editing to modify gray wolf embryos, tweaking 14 genes to express 20 traits believed to have belonged to dire wolves. Think a broader skull, enhanced muscle mass, a larger, denser frame, greater jaw strength. These are wolves with a prehistoric edge. So, how do you create a not quite extinct animal? It starts with ancient DNA, taken from fossils, teeth, and bones found in tar pits or permafrost. Researchers identify which genes control size, skull shape, immune function, and bone density in dire wolves. Then, using CRISPR, a kind of genetic editing tool, they splice those traits into a modern wolf embryo. The embryos are then carried to term by a surrogate gray wolf. In late 2024, the first pups were born, and by early 2025, they were already being observed and studied at a private wildlife reserve in Texas. They look different, they act different, and their genetics, according to Colossal, are closer to a dire wolf than any living animal today. But this raises a big question. Why bring back an apex predator that went extinct 10,000 years ago. Colossal says the goal isn't to unleash dire wolves into the wild, but to study how genetic engineering can help with conservation. By creating resilient wolf hybrids, scientists hope to strengthen endangered wolf populations, improve immune systems, and maybe one day revive traits that help canines survive in a rapidly changing world. It's also about understanding extinction and reversing it. If we can bring back lost traits in animals, can we apply the same tech to save species on the brink today? Or even rewild ecosystems that have been thrown off balance? But not everyone is on board. Critics argue that bringing back extinct species is dangerous and unethical. They warn of playing God messing with ecosystems and creating animals that don't truly belong anywhere. What happens if one of these hybrids escapes, or breeds with wild population, or gets sick in ways we can't predict? 
Others argue that the money could be better spent protecting species that are still alive, but critically endangered. Colossal insists all precautions are in place. The animals are being monitored 24-7. No public release. No Jurassic Park moments. At least, not yet. For now, Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi are still young, but healthy. They're already showing physical traits we've never seen in modern wolves. As they grow, scientists will study their behaviors, biology, and potential role in broader genetic projects. Are we witnessing the return of a legend or the start of a new chapter in genetic science? One thing's for sure, the dire wolf is no longer just a fossil. It's walking again. So what do you think? Should we be bringing back extinct animals or are we crossing a line we shouldn't? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this story, hit that like button, subscribe for more wild science, and remember, the past isn't gone, it's just waiting for the right gene. Triangular teeth as large as a man's hand, jaws so big they could swallow a human whole, and a body size so colossal that it dwarfed great white sharks. Megalodon was an incredible apex predator that took on anything it set its sights on. They would devour whales and dolphins, a single tooth was larger than a man's hand, and they had the most powerful jaws in the animal kingdom. These 70 feet long marine predators were king of the oceans 23 to 3.6 million years ago until they died out. Or did they? People are beginning to believe that Megalodon may still be alive today. They believe that somehow in the vastness of our oceans, the greatest predator to have existed is still out there. While scientists still claim that this fascinating beast that once fed on full-size cetaceans like sperm whales and blue whales is long gone, more and more evidence keeps popping up to suggest otherwise. But what do you think? Do you think Megalodon could still be riding beneath the waves? Recent sightings ripple through the internet, spreading like wildfire. But the speculation about Megalodon's existence really kicked off with a documentary about the animal. The Discovery Channel aired a program some years ago which captured the audience's attention and set their minds racing. The trusted channel showed incredible footage. One shock discovery was of a blue whale carcass that had washed ashore. But this wasn't your typical beached whale. This one had a far more gruesome end. It had been sliced in half. Its lower section was missing and its intestines spilled out onto the sand. The horrific image sent shockwaves through viewers. Could the Megalodon have taken on the largest marine mammal in the world? Or was this damage done by the propeller of an enormous ship? But the documentary didn't end there. There was more to come. A photo that had been taken off the coast of South Africa was brought to light. A photo that showed a six-foot-tall dorsal fin rising out of the water alongside an injured blue whale. Today's largest sharks do not possess fins that tall, but orcas do. Was this the dorsal fin of an orca? It didn't look like it. The shape was wrong. What about an old archive photo which was then shown? This time not only was a formidable and giant dorsal fin protruding out of the water, fully on display, but 64 feet behind the dorsal fin was a tail fin also sticking up above the surface. The viewers could clearly see just how massive this giant was as it was swimming alongside a German U-boat, apparently in 1942, with shocked crew staring out at the open ocean and the monster just yards from their sub. The program may have set hearts racing at the thought that such a prehistoric creature still exists today, but there was disappointment just around the corner. The Discovery Channel's apparently scientific TV documentary Megalodon, the Monster Shark Lives, was in fact a hoax. There was a small disclaimer at the beginning saying that this was not new scientific evidence, but more of a speculative piece with edited video footage and photos. Perhaps the scientists were right. Perhaps the Meg had been dead and buried millions of years ago. 
But over the years, there have been consistent stories about Megalodon sightings, and today, they still continue. Back in 1918, a group of fishermen in Australia refused to go out to sea after they had spotted something truly terrifying. They had seen the ominous shadow of an enormous shark when they had been pulling in their crayfish pots. And not only that, their crayfish pots were starting to go missing, lines, weights, and all. Something massive and powerful was taking them. Then they spotted it. The head was as big as a shed roof. The length of the creature was as long as the wharf on which the men stood telling their story. They had watched the water bubble and boil as the creature, whatever it was, devoured a school of fish just feet from their fishing boat. These men knew the ocean like the back of their hands. They had spent years hauling in their lines. They had seen whales and they had seen sharks, but they had never seen anything like this. Fast forward to recent sightings of a group of scientists that were in for a shock. They were out at sea on a shark research voyage when something began beeping on their radar. They turned their attention to the screen and watched as an enormous image appeared in fuzzy red and yellow pixels. They didn't know what it was at first, but then, right before their eyes, the shape morphed from an undecipherable shadow into the shape of a shark complete with a dorsal fin. The researchers held their breaths, quickly calculating the size of this thing. It measured 50 feet long and they estimated that it weighed an incredible 40 tons. For 15 minutes, the gigantic creature lurked feet beneath their boat. Could they have finally discovered Megalodon? Could this be definitive proof of the prehistoric shark's existence? They cast a long line into the water, hoping the predator would take a bite and show itself at the surface. But there was no bite, and as they eagerly watched the screen, the shark-like shape dissipated, and it became apparent that it wasn't actually a giant shark, but instead a massive shoal of Atlantic mackerel. It seems that everyone is out looking for Megalodon. We have been told that prehistoric marine species have been extinct before, only to find them caught in fishing nets very much alive. Coelacanths, for example, were thought to have been extinct since the Cretaceous, but recent sightings have revealed that they are still swimming in our seas. Could the scientists be wrong about Megalodon too? Some tourists taking a six-week cruise in the Atlantic were in for a shock when they peered over the side of their ship one day. In stunning footage captured by one of the holiday makers, a large shark moves slowly yet deliberately towards the cruise ship. Its tail fin gently sways side to side as it comes in closer to investigate. Many who were looking into the water that day were convinced that they had just spotted Megalodon. They had witnessed the return of the prehistoric giant. But others were quick to point out that the eerie-looking shark was in fact a basking shark, a plankton feeder that is completely harmless to humans. It is the second largest living fish after the whale shark and regularly reaches 8 meters 26 feet long. Some believe that Megalodon managed to survive the extinction by lying low in the depths of the ocean. There are vast expanses of ocean that have yet to be explored by humans. We are discovering new species in the sea all the time. Could Megalodon be swimming in the Mariana Trench and other great depths? It is unlikely. They were apex predators and relied on marine mammals and fish that lived near the surface. Although we don't know too much about the deepest parts of the oceans because they are so inaccessible, it is unlikely that they would be able to support such an enormous predator. The kind of life down there consists of tiny invertebrates that wouldn't satiate the appetite of megalodon. As well as food being a problem, temperature would also be an issue. Megalodon needed warmer, shallower waters to thrive. The deep ocean is bitterly cold, and unless Megalodon has found a way to adapt to that cold, they wouldn't be able to survive down there. That's not to say that some sharks don't live in deeper waters. The Greenland shark, famed for its incredible lifespan of 500 years or more, lives up to 1,200 meters, 4,000 feet, under the surface. But this species of shark, if geared up for those conditions, it has special adaptations to cope with living under such high water pressure, something the megalodon didn't possess. 
Whilst there may not be any definitive evidence that Megalodon still exists, it is exciting to speculate, and no one can ever be sure. Scientists say that we would see far more whale carcasses washing up ashore, half-eaten if the Meg was still out there. But the whale remains could be devoured by other sea creatures before making it ashore. With our busy shipping lanes, some say that we would have far more so-called sightings if there was a giant fish, bigger than a bus in our waters. But if it has avoided extinction by hiding in the depths, then we wouldn't necessarily spot it at the surface. Until we have definitive proof that Megalodon exists, we will have to settle with speculation but ask ourselves, how well do we truly know our oceans?